Very good afternoon. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. Always trying to find something of interest to show you in each video. If I can't find anything, I simply won't do a video. It's as simple as that, especially at this time of the year. Now that we're starting to get uh, towards the, um, you know, the very end game of any type of wintry weather, but we do still have some stuff to speak about, uh, and I will uh, continue to show you that. Uh, looking at the global temperature normally for the course of today, this is the 26th of April. A couple of things that stand out, uh, you know, certainly across the planet, you can see largely warmer than normal. So the, the Earth is actually sitting just marginally above normal at 0 0.1 Celsius uh, above, um, but uh, the Northern Hemisphere is a good half a degree above normal. But what I want to point out in, in particular is the Arctic is below normal and the Antarctic is well below normal, so they're both respectively sitting at uh, minus 0 0.4 for the Arctic, minus 3.2 for the Antarctic. What is very interesting, however, about that is the the Antarctic oscillation is sitting negative at this moment in time. As for the Arctic oscillation, it too is sitting negative at this moment in time as well. So it's quite unusual, that, you know, maybe I'm mistaken here and somebody can actually correct me if I'm wrong, but it's very unusual actually to see a negative Antarctic oscillation and Arctic oscillation and the temperature normally within that region is actually colder than normal. You would typically expect to see the opposite taking place. So that was something that kind of caught my eye during the night as I was uh, sitting around waiting, getting loaded, and uh, I thought that was quite... Uh, interesting and worth pointing out to you um, that the both negative uh, AO, AAO and the regional temperature is below normal um, so yeah uh, you know an interesting thing uh, perhaps for myself maybe not so much for your for yourself but um, nonetheless uh, I thought that was rather unusual looking at the two meter temperature normally globally for the year to date and you can see here that we've got a lot of warmth. This is off weatherbell.com, by the way. We've got a heck of a lot of warmth, if you notice here, stacked up across, uh, you know, extending really from the British Isles right the way across to the Pacific coast here. We've got very warm, of course, north of North America. And essentially, the only areas that are really, uh, you know, well, are, are, are widely below normal, if you will, is Africa, Western China, if you notice here, there's quite a significant temperature normally below normal here. And we've, of course, got a colder than normal, a large swathe of, of, of North America, particularly so the United States. And I believe it's the coldest uh, year to date uh, thus far for the United States since 2014, which is quite interesting. But generally speaking, the Earth is sitting uh, fairly warm and this kind of contradicts or goes against the overall idea. Now this is the UAH satellite based temperature of the lower stratosphere or the lower troposphere should I say. And while since the, the Super El Nino of 2016-17 uh, we've seen of course the rise here um, coming off the uh, below normal the last time we've seen uh, firmly below normal temperatures within the lower troposphere was a way back to 2011-12, uh, arguably 13 as well. And that was around the period where we're coming off the solar minimum of 08-09. Since then, we've seen a double rise and fall in temperature, and we're, we're you know, in the midst of that secondary drop in temperature post uh, Super Nino. And, uh, but the fact is that the temperature within the atmosphere isn't really cooling off anywhere near as much as I expected. And the land temperature is still sitting top five warmest on record. So, in almost, there's a part of me that's really asking the questions here with regards to, to you know, climate change and whatnot. And really... The, the typical mechanisms that would drive cooling of, of Earth's atmosphere, both within you know the troposphere as well as down at the, the lower atmosphere around near the surface, we're seeing a disconnect here. We're seeing a small cooling, if you will, if I'm being honest with you, 
within the atmosphere and we're not really seeing much in the way of cooling down at the, the land, down at the surface here. So that is something to me anyway that is somewhat slightly concerning that we're not seeing the drop off with this La Nina as you would expect to see. And uh, you know, we may continue to see cooling taking place. We may get close to um you know that line getting closer to the average line perhaps by the end of spring and beginning of summer here but uh, certainly in terms of the global temperature it's still fairly warm uh, given uh, the fact that we've got a La Nina in place at the moment here um, so you can I'm sure you can comment with your own thoughts on that but uh, it's something I just thought I would maybe uh, point out to you in today's video um, of course the European May forecast uh, is now released on marfoganweather.com I posted it yesterday I meant to mention that in yesterday's video actually that that is now available on the website do please check that out if you get a chance and of course we do have cooler conditions to end April and begin the month of May so the latest GFS uh, 850 millibar temperatures look like this here we've got this uh, chilly air mass coming down along with the area of high pressure as alluded to in yesterday's video that high sinks south over the UK mid to late this week we're going to see lighter winds probably clear skies at night frosty conditions then we've got a system that comes in during the course of the weekend and then the early next week it looks as if we've got that plunge of colder air coming down you can see here that we get this rush coming off Greenland over the Arctic region down over the British Isles and it looks as if that cold tries to hang on tries to hold on pulling our air in from the east uh, and northeast uh, through the course of next week and even into the following weekend here so not this weekend but next weekend which would of course be uh, the 7th and the 8th of, of May we still try to hold on to these cooler air masses so it looks as if the uh, chilly conditions that we have towards the end of the month into the early portion of May may try to linger as we go forward the exact timing of when that cold kind of gets pulled out once again is all subject to question and change of course so that's it for today thanks for watching do appreciate it please drop a comment like share and of course subscribe to the channel and i will hopefully be back again tomorrow with more bye for now